Good evening. Welcome back to Sisters Unedited. I'm here as usual with my favorite sisters. First, we want to send a shout out to Miss Cassandra Bradford. She is out, not feeling well today. Oh, sad. sad face. Sad face. Hi, Cassandra. Hopefully, she'll be back in the studio for next week's show because we love her. The show is not the show I think without she's her. She's faking. She's probably eating cake. Well, either way, call and find out. We need to make sure that everybody knows our names. I'm Tara Porter, still here with my sisters unedited. Kimberly Lindsay, excited to be here with my sisters unedited. And Shamika Nicholson, and extra excited to be here. Well, today's topic is education. We hear a lot about it, especially with the government, with us, you know, it's time for us to get ready to prepare for a new president. Mm. So education is one of the big hot topics. Absolutely, absolutely. So. You know, I always have a list. Um. <laughs> Is it 22 or 17 on this one? <laughs> well, I tell you what we're not going to do today. What are we not doing? Not a hundred million list today. We're, we're not, not going to do many, that. What's the number? Tell me now so I can. Five. All right. Five. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a good, That's a good okay. round. All right. So then my first topic would be distractions. Oh, that's be, Being a mom, like I see the kind of, you know, it's like it's almost impossible, the job that children have just to go to school and get an education. Oh yeah, yeah. When you when you factor in, aside from the sex, the cyberbullying, that's oh just God. so big. These kids can't seem to get away from it. I I mean they don't want to turn turn it off. Don't text back. They don't know how to control that. And you remember when when bu when bullying was simple, you just got bullied at school, school and right. not out of school. Every day, all day, just every part yeah. of your life, bullying can exist. And the bullying went on for what two, three days. And By Friday, it was, it was done. Somebody else, somebody else, somebody else's turn to get bullied. Right. Yeah. You don't want to pick on somebody else because you know that's how bullies do. They like to move on. But um, what I see with distractions more now than ever because you know back when I was growing up, we didn't have all of these games create games right. you had to go outside and play or you had to clean up you know what I'm saying I, I, I we've gotten away from going outside and play and, and you know do things that are productive and, and this you know cyber world and that's another is big part of the distraction because before when we went outside to play there wasn't a lot of amount of time that our parents gave us that we could go outside first you come home and do your homework the worst right case scenario you had the opportunity to have a snack right and then it was homework now the kids are in their room supposedly doing homework but what are they doing playing a game but we really can't blame them because as a society how yeah. many times are you at work or you're in a meeting or you're at church and you looking at your phone you checking your Facebook you checking your Twitter you checking it's in to see who said what if we can't control ourselves from the distractions how do we expect kids to Good point. You are a good point. You have a good point, but you know, old people say, "Do what I do. Do what I tell you do." Not what I do. Not what I. And yeah. that was never effective. It, it, by it the way, work. parents, that was not effective. We definitely still. Well, it worked watch. on me. I ain't did. Uh, <laughs> I did what my mom told me. Do as me. I say, not as I well, do. Well, I tell you what worked. It wasn't that my mother said that. It was the law that she seriously carried out. Like there were right. there were right. there were uh, consequences if you did not do as I say. So okay. So here's this other thing. This is one of the issues I have with schools. So it is already difficult for the children to go to school and get an education. What about the fact that on top of one of the schools, and I won't say the school, it's in Fort Worth, Texas, but one high school that my daughter went to, it was her freshman year, and she would come home regularly and talk about they had a police raid at school today, they brought the drug dogs in, People were fighting. The fight turned into a big old mob situation. Oh, they yeah, had to bring police in. That's regular in Detroit, so, child. We had child. Look, that's, now, that's trying to get into the building and make it from one class to another. Right. We had, we had uh, what do you call those detectors? Gun the metal detectors. Yeah, metal I remember detectors. when they put them yeah. on. Yeah. And I think I was either in the ninth or tenth grade in Chicago when they first put it up in our school. Oh, Lord. And you had to walk through the, yes, Chirac. Chirac, for real. But so, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. that so I, I, watched, I watched that happen. She came home every day, you know, frustrated with all the, the distractions. But then when it's time to do homework, you remember we used to carry all our books home? They don't get to take books home anymore. And Depending how, on how your do school you district, do when did that happen? homework with no books? When did that happen? I remember hearing about that, but yeah, I don't real. understand how they expect the kids to learn and read. At least we were, our parents could tell us, go read chapter one through four and then tell me about it. How do you know now that your kid is or isn't even doing homework if they don't, don't have a book? To, and you can't even check to see what they have been what they reading know. to see where they are to see what they need help with because the books can't come home. Well, let me just say this. Um, coming from a Detroit school system and 
I was fortunate enough, my son, we actually didn't live in Detroit. We lived in Allen Park. So the school system is a, a, a lot better than Detroit public schools. But I grew up in Detroit public schools. Shout out to Detroit public schools, Southwestern. Anyway, but, you know, it's it was, a, it was above that standard. But coming here to Texas, I'm going to be honest, I am really, 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 really um, happy that I made this choice for my son at the end of the day. Now, he doesn't have a lot of books, but they did give him an iPad, which is not some of the luxuries that you would have in Michigan. He has an iPad. He has a uh, login to where he can check everything, and so can I. Yeah, they, now right. most of the schools have that now. I love it. The and student portal. The student portal, portal. And, and I get emails. Now, let me tell you something that I did notice. Um, the school system that we are in don't play games. Mm -hmm. If that grade is below a C, I, get, I and my boyfriend get an email. It's not a game here. You can only be absent so many times. They're a lot stricter and a lot harder, and he's doing a hundred percent better. Now, I'm not sure about the rest of Texas. Yeah, I was gonna say, unfortunately, right. that's the not ones who were the born status in quo. Texas. Yeah. And, and then that goes into um, private versus public, because we're what public, public school. schools, right, but, but, but private versus public, what public schools lack have a lot to do with the fact that they're public schools. The private school, I just, I hate the unfairness of the rich versus the poor, especially as it relates to education, because I believe all children deserve to have a good education I regardless. Agree with you. And if we're smart, we realize it's our planet that we're neglecting, our state, our country, our, our community that we're neglecting when we don't provide the best education. For everyone. For everyone. I agree with you. I definitely we're not going to live separately. The people who do that right now, who live in the richer a areas and everything, you don't know where your children and your children's children are going to live and who they're going to be neighbors they, with, yes. who they're going to work with, who they're going to work for. You just don't know. I right? think a state, I, sh I think it should be allocated evenly, the yeah. funding. Yeah. It really I think should. So. It should. It shouldn't be based on the area that you're in. Thank God that I'm in a good area and I'm happy because it shows it, if you put into the education, you get out a good product for Absolutely. your child. Yep. And you're right. And if you're basing if you're basing what a school district gets financially on the taxes for that area, you're going to be putting teachers' pay in there. So mm -hmm. if you are having less funds for the school, then you have less funds to pay these teachers, which means you have people who don't care right. to teach your kids, right. or they're coming Much in there younger teachers. teachers. Now this mm -hmm. this is my thing with school younger teachers. Our teachers were old to us. Oh. We had Mrs. Kravitz and Mr. Smith that was 87, <laughs> you know. That would beat you with a pot, you know, you beat you like with them. a They weren't attractive. Right. They, they were parent teachers old people's shoes. Away from home. And now you have these 20 somethings in school sleeping with the students. And that's another Because that's a, that's a blurry that's line. A, and that's another distraction because what about the lines that are blurred there where, okay, so let's think about the students who are in situations like that where they are being mishandled by adults. Well, that's another distraction. I have to go to school and see these people every right. day. And sometimes the opportunity to switch classes is not there. And the key word is children. Children, children are not ready for adult things. They may think they're ready for adult things. And that's where adults have to be adults because when we were younger, I remember being put in my, hey, stay in a child's place. Right. This is for grown folks. This, this has nothing is grown to do with up you. conversation. Get out of my mouth, go that in your room. That doesn't exist anymore. It's, that it that doesn't. statement does not exist. It and doesn't. I have seen parents going back and forth with another student. Like if their child gets into it with a parent, that parent will go back and forth with another student as if they were an adult. Right. Mm -mm. That would never have happened in our day. Mm -mm. Somebody's mother would not have wasted time talking to me. I remember one of my younger cousins told what? me, he said, he said, you need to lighten up. Things have changed. And I want to say it was like 2004 or five at the time. And I was like, you are so dumb. That's why I have to be more strict because of the year that it is. The lax, yeah. Right, it's not time to relax. He, things are getting worse, so we have to tighten up more. And, and I feel like all of this detachment from real life is basically making kids not know how to communicate properly. Yeah. Like my yeah, son and his terrible. social life, you know, I hear him on this game. <laughs> he is running things on this game. Right. I hear him. This is what we're all going to do. We're going to do this. You, you raid here and you do this. And I'll just be sitting back like, who is this? Because in real life. Because in real life, Andre, you want to go to the other church with the teenagers? I don't know. Yeah. You know I, what I, I have mean? A, I have a friend who has a son who is amazingly smart. He's 13 and he can create games already himself. 
but his social skills don't exist. When he gets in that game, he gets in his room, he logs in, and he puts the headphones on, and he's talking to the squadron, the and yeah. that's it. But when you take him out of that game, he can't have a conversation. He, uh, he doesn't really care. Now, but and here's something else. This kind of ties in with education. To me, I feel like there are certain things that I only want my children to learn from me. Right. But what about when your children, with this distraction of computers and media, what about what they're learning from other people? Because you know they're playing with other people on yeah. these games and stuff a lot of times, too. And they're able to chat and talk. If you play any game, I don't care if it's Connect Four, and you're playing it's against someone else, they have the opportunity to do an inbox chat. Yeah. And so you're and actually great. having conversations mm -hmm. with total strangers who are influencing your children. And they may not be other children. And, and they and and you're right. aren't other children. And that's when you have to be, AKA what you call nosy, what I am. Stalker. Excuse me, who are you on the phone with? Because Mama wanna play. My business. You know, I try to get into it sometimes, right. but we do use it for our advantage. Mm -hmm against him because he likes it so much. Yeah. You don't do good in school. Yeah, it's gotta go. uh, we will confiscate. We That's just confiscated the TV and the game. Look, and it happens. It so has to happen. Is it me or does it seem like a huge conspiracy as far as education is concerned? Like I'm thinking about no books, all okay. these distractions. Mm -hmm. They've taken the arts out of a lot of schools and they've taken God out of the schools. You may as well take the children out of school. What is the point? And they took writing out. Take, don't forget writing that. Writing is gone. So you don't have to learn how to handwrite anything anymore. <laughs> really? A lot they of can't, a, They don't write cursive at all. At all. And they, because they're on the, the tablets. They're on computers so and tablets. Why, so why they don't teach do a lot of writing. how to handwrite when you use well, a computer? Yeah, you got to type a paper. I get that. Yeah. I mean, the most they do is put a heading on something, and maybe if it's a worksheet or a book or something, they have to put a heading on it, fill in answers, but it's not as really writing like when we wrote an essay or something you actually used a pen and paper and you remember if you messed up halfway through he yeah, had to go back and rewrite the whole but then they invented <laughs> white out white out no but my teacher i had teachers that we had take some that, that wouldn't you wouldn't would, even mm -hmm. our mother didn't like white out no start over start over that looks horrible start over and even if you didn't mess up if you just didn't write legibly enough for her she's like no if I can't read this, I'm not gonna have you turn it. I, I'm the same way, and 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 this is what I'll make my son do. If he can't read it back to me, you gotta go back and do this over. I'm gonna yeah, because if you can't read your oh, own yeah. writing, what are we doing? No, right. what are we doing? And the right? teachers absolutely don't make enough to have to go through what, decoding what are we doing? your homework. What are we doing? Yeah. But I do like that they have the pretests and things like that online, and it guides him to studying. But the reading, not so much. Not so but I did see him bring a book home. I'm not sure what that was about, but I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't know if it was a book from school Volunteer, or you know, I'm just happy. <laughs> just, make sure, do with just make sure it's words in there, not just a cover <laughs> with some pictures in there. <laughs> appropriate reading. Well, I just feel like there is a really, really big conspiracy situation where there's so much being taken out of the school system. And then on top of that, when we come back, I want to talk about how you know, the, the school systems, and, and I think budgeting has a lot to do with it, especially in certain areas where they have cut the budget so much so they remove books as an right. issue, they remove different types of classes, the arts and things, so that that's not an expense for the school anymore. But when we come back, my next idea or thought would be the, the parents are missing. The parents are missing. Have you been to a PTA meeting? Do they still have those? I don't know. Do they oh. even still call it a PTA meeting because the parents aren't there? I think the PTA in my area, I think they are like the... Uh, the uh, mob, okay? <laughs> they try to jump you in. <laughs> Honey, well, they call me one more time. If that's gonna be effective, I say let's do it. <laughs> they need they need to put them ladies wherever it be all cool the other school systems. You can. Mrs. Smith. You can. We Paris have not do seen it. you at a PTA meeting all of fifth grade. At the football game, they try to hawk me down. Hi, hi, are you Andre, mom? Are you? Yeah, yeah, we're with the PTA. We want you to join. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Well, after break, we'll talk about the PTA jumping you in, the doing parents, what you have MIA, to do, parents. and the kids in school taking care of. We'll be back after this message. Thanks so much for watching. Hashtag beat your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag.
we are back. Since it's unedited today, we are talking about education, and we were talking about the CIA missing parents or something. Yes, what? Yeah. Oh Lord, you need your the jump butt in. kicked. The, the jump, jump in. in. The, the, yeah, the jump <laughs> in. The gangsters that are her PTA. Yeah, I think they should exist. I think I think we need to go ahead now and 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 make a, a movement mm -hmm. of parents who are so serious about it that we do jump and and buy. Hey, gang members do it. At least we be doing it for a good cause, right? Right, I Absolutely. think so. If they can get away with it, it's ridiculous to have to do that. But I mean, you're having babies. We gotta beg you to come to PTA. But that, you know, that goes back to the old saying: "It takes a village." It because takes back a in village. the day, it, you said, it, "Wait, it, you said uh, uh, it uh, takes, a village. takes a village." Yeah, you said the village. <laughs> mm -hmm. Back in the day, right if there. you missed school, somebody was telling your mother, and it wasn't necessarily the school. It could be Miss So and So. If her, if Johnny said, "Well, you know, Kim ain't been to school in three days," she calling your mama. Hey, you know, one of my neighbors sick? did that with with us. She called. One of my neighbors knew a girlfriend of mine. My daughter headed out to the bus stop. I headed off to work. The lady Ooh. saw her leave, heading for the bus stop, and then she saw her head back home. Mm. Ooh, so she tried to do the so okey doke. No, no, no. Here's what happened. She called me and said, "Mama missed my bus." And I said, okay, go back home. Let me know when you made it in. Lock the door. No company, no leaving. Cool. She's a good girl. But the neighbor didn't know what I knew. Her concern was, does she know? So she called my girlfriend and she said, well, I'm going to you know, ask you, do you think she would be offended or think that I'm being a nosy neighbor? But I saw her daughter go back home and I'm not sure if that was what was supposed to happen or what. And the girlfriend said, no, here's her number. She would definitely want you to call her. And I was excited by that because yeah. it is very rare. Yeah. I mean, we were raised with that being the norm. You didn't have to even ask neighbors to report that type of stuff. Mm -mm. Right. Mr. Cooper snitched on me every chance he got. Oh, all of our neighbors and did. Rest and, his and soul. And step out and say, hey, where are you going? Yeah, are you sick? Oh, Your bus stop is not and that does way. your mama know? Yeah. He would give a report because they had an indoor porch. Mm -hmm. Shamika had that telephone and that radio on that step. I would be like, really, <laughs> Mr. Cooper? Really? <laughs> they see all. But Snitch. you know what? But that, that doesn't even work today. It, it couldn't work today because these kids don't respect their parents. So they definitely don't respect strangers. They no, no fear of consequences I, at I all. have rolled up on kids fighting and said something, and they just look like I'm one of the kids. Yeah, it's a difficult they moment. Don't, they don't respect authority at all. Parents dropping pa the ball. And their parents another, haven't told them to. That's another department where they're dropping the ball. Well, the other issue now with all the distractions, with all the fighting, with the missing parents, what about overcrowded classrooms? There's like a really, that's, and again, that depends on which school and which school district you're in, unfortunately. But what about, there's two different students that I'm very concerned about, and I, and I want to believe that most of the students fall in one or the other. There's a category of students who, whether they're good students as far as quick learners or not, is mm -hmm. not the case doesn't matter but what about the ones who want to learn they're well behaved they're there to learn they're doing their part they're having okay. expectations of their teachers but they can't get what they need because of the distraction from other students the, the teacher the whatever telephones the everything everybody taped in the fights and you know everything and then the other but the other side of that that's is that student and then the other category to me is the students are are the students who have either poor behavior some of them are unwilling different things like that. They're in these classrooms and they're a part of the distraction for the students who are serious. Now, they deserve their education just as much, yeah. but th since in some schools it's overcrowded, how do you fix that problem? Because they're cramming them in yeah. these classrooms. And they, they don't have them a, all together. So right, they're the all kids together. They don't who do have, have a problem them. learning, they don't have a chance. They don't have a chance to catch up, and that's a lot of what makes them act out, is because if I can't get it, and that's I'm not point. understanding, and nobody's trying to help me, then I'm just not going to try. I'm not going to do it. But that's, that's the overcrowding. That's, again, the financial thing. So, unfortunately, mm -hmm. we have a new president coming into office soon, and we need, really need to be paying attention Excuse to what's me, going I on. To, I need to pray right now. Because, I mean, it's important if you... We need listen. to have a come to Jesus moment, because if y'all think that Chucky, a.k.a. Donald Trump, I'm is about to be the president, please, please, God, go on vote. Because, listen, if he doesn't, please. if he doesn't want the Hispanics <laughs> in America... Who next? Oh, he's going into school. You know, the kids, the kids are gonna start getting snatched out of school. Yeah. They bored him. But I'm just saying, who's next after that? Yes. Oh, well, he, everybody but him. Everybody but him. That's the answer. So we, you know, we really please. We gotta pay register attention. to vote register now. To vote and you vote. have a whole year. Please, and that's, and that's not very long. So it's please not. get your paperwork together. You know, they're cracking down on and that too. And they play so many games with voting. So guys, really take that seriously. Go ahead and be prepared early. That way you have your registration done. If there's going to be any issues with your address, your ID, 
your residency, whatever, get that stuff taken care of early. Now, if you live in Florida, no I would play. not recommend, you know, due to the past history, that if you have warrants <laughs> out for your arrest, <laughs> then do not. I repeat, do, do not, not try to register to vote. Now, I want you to get yourself together and have you some money for a lawyer first. Yes. Be smart. But, but you got time. You got, but you got time. They, they it's have still early. Yeah, you have get time. Jump on that right Because they now. will put your butt in the claim. Get okay. your <laughs> probation <laughs> thing taken care of. <laughs> trying to go get your civil servant on and you go to jail. <laughs> right to jail. They waiting on y'all in Florida. No they get down service. like that. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. So, Don't do it. So we talked about these teachers in their pay a little bit earlier. But... Do you know that there are so many jobs, so many non-career jobs, just regular, teaching is a career choice. It right? is. It is something that molds and, and supports our community, it supports our society, it is uber important, and they're still making less than some people who just work a job. And they're yeah. expected to handle these children with integrity, they're supposed to be professional, they're supposed to follow certain guidelines, do you know, with the with the notebooks and all, it, then the teachers' requirements are different too. Now they're having to take home more homework and do more work to reach these children because they're short in some districts on tools, books, funding, and a lot of times the teachers are paying out of for their these pockets, supplies out of and, their and, pockets. and out of their pockets. system in Allen Park they would send something home and say donate and and you know what I would yeah it's no point in not because I there's would no other, I mean what else do we do right the funds because you it's know not being spread, it's not being spread out so that it's fair for all districts and all students in all states so you know we have to do it I, I definitely think it's a step process um I think you should definitely would be begin with paying them more but if you start paying them more it should be more qualification oh, to get better yeah. better teachers yeah, like you should do some type of behavioral or I think or they should do that anyway pay or no pay because yeah, to me to the see job if is this is what, it is what to the pay. you've you've been called to do because it is the most it's one of the most it's up there but with states doctors can't do that yeah, states aren't going to do that because there is no pay i cannot filter out who's going to be best and pay them what they deserve because there's no money. So the school system, the districts cannot do that. And then that costs money to test people. Well, I, I think that the filtering, I'm gonna say this one more time, I think that this filtering issue should have absolutely nothing to do with pay. Because if you went to school and you became certified and this is what you do, then you know the importance of the job, period. You know what the pay is before you go out and take the job. So if you accept it, I think they still need to be very strict on the guidelines that, that the, the instructors in these schools have to follow, behavioral and otherwise. It just is what it is. Regardless of what you get, I don't care if, if they drop the pay. If you still are teaching and you take the lower pay, your requirements should never change. Well, let, let me just it's say unfair the way the money thing in, is in working, perfect, but, but the job world. is still important and it still needs to be handled as such. But let me just say this. This is how crazy it was, and I realized it was just set up to lose. My daughter, who uh, was in high school, but she went to um, college as well. She was doing dual enrollment in Michigan. She ended up having 24 college credits, and she was, that's all you need is 24 college credits. But she is a child. Yeah. She was off for the teaching job. Wow. That's unfortunate. I still ain't finished teaching her nothing. Okay. Right, and she can teach somebody else. And you finna <laughs> teach us some, somebody else something? Scary. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and, and, that, and that's, like I said, but that's the part of the problem with, with okay. these younger teachers going in. The whole, funny story, sorry, segue. <laughs> <laughs> School bus drivers, okay? They're a part of the system Ooh, as well. Oh, no, I I'm at a light. I'm at a light. I'm uh -huh. listening to music. My windows are down. And there's a school bus <laughs> to my right. Music loud. Some guy is like rapping, he's banging on the steering wheel, and he's just all, hey, hey. And I was like, who is this? And I'm now looking like I just, are the kids off the bus? Is he, back? I was saying, wow, who is this bus driver and why? I just said, why you know, is he so in, drunk my, in the morning? In my, in my, in my nosy <laughs> spirit, I kind of, I leaned and down. And is he crunk with the children? He crunk with no, the children. No, here's the bad part. When I leaned down to be nosy to get a look at the bus driver, you knew who it was. He was one of my cousins. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise you from that day forward, I said, my baby is not riding on that school bus. <laughs> <laughs> this is the partying is, if that's the word, smoking-esque 
drinkingest person <laughs> on the planet. Driving the most bus. turned up is busted. Now what what planet. we not go do? Not not come I'm on sorry. now. He probably he probably he good with your job. kids. He uh, probably good with some kids. Tell you, you know what? some people can do that like that. But the thing but the thing about it is understand they like <laughs> my baby was not gonna be one of the people on the bus line <laughs> in risk. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the second hand contact oh. high. Are you smoking with the children on the bus? Oh, That's what I want to know. But you know what? My sister and my cousin, my cousin Danielle actually was a bus driver. Now, you know what? Danielle, on her happy medicine, is wonderful. Okay? Mm-hmm. Happy medicine. Danielle mm-hmm. said mm-hmm. she had to take happy pills to deal with these the bad children. children. Yeah, but, but when you're not they on your so pill, are the children in jeopardy? No, mm-hmm. no. That she like no, she, she choking kids out. No, she <laughs> but she be yelling. Pushing them down. She be yelling. Mm-hmm. Get yeah. on Danielle's bus if you want to. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Well, well, bus, she she stopped number, number two four six in Detroit. Yeah. Was no, it? she stopped driving. She stopped driving. But the school bus, bus thank drivers you. have a <laughs> hell of a job as well. Because I, I, I wouldn't do baby, it. Baby, my daughter when when Sydney was allowed to ride the school bus, she called me. I'm thinking she should have called me to tell me that she's at home by now. Why haven't I heard from her? And I I can't hear from her. She eventually calls me and she says, Mom, I'm on the bus and the bus driver pulled over on the side of the freeway and she says she's not moving this bus until the police gets here. <laughs> I said, well, where are you? She's pulled over on the side of the freeway, on the service road. I said, well, you tell that bus driver your mother, your ride, your real ride is on the way. But these teachers have a hard, the, the bus drivers and yeah. the teachers have a hard they job. They bad. And if that's it's the tough. only thing I can do to make you sit down. And they was cut. And that may or may not do any good. And they, they cut sex the funding. The They're fighting on the bus. It's a lot going on. They cut the funding for the, the bus aid. You know it used to be bus aid because wow. the bus right. driver only yeah. job was to drive. is to drive the bus. Now, if I got to beat your kids, cuss your children out, break up a fight, nobody going to get drive. home. Right. And right. drive. And drive. Who going to get home? That's why she had them happy pills. That's why she had them happy well, pills. That's why I <laughs> put my baby in the car and take, and I'm so tired of driving, Lord Jesus. This is the year, though, baby. We, we, we got the car, got the, we just got to get the license. She just finished driver's ed. So y'all pray for me. I just need to make it another couple of weeks. I'm praying for you because my daughter, 19, mm-hmm. and Lord, she turned them this quarters the into one. wheels. Yeah. Uh, now, my baby's a great driver. I think she's going to keep all wheels on the ground. The worst Ooh, driver boy. is the oldest girl. So I think this girl is okay. I'm, I was just telling Kim I love riding with her. She said I, she I, I can't even do nobody else. I got I'm, a niece and a nephew. And from Kayla, I can't I can't teach nobody else how to drive. Yeah, it That's one. it. Yeah, she's still driving like that? I mean, I, I, you know. Wait, you said you taught her to drive and she's driving on two wheels. What? I, did, it, so it, what I'm saying is. Because I yeah. tried. She did not listen. She oh, do okay. her. Yeah. She now, do okay, her. Okay, but wait. Let me ask you this because we said. You remember how our parents used to say, do as I say, not as I do. So when she's in the passenger seat. I told her to do what I do. I drive slow. I'm a good mm-hmm. driver. Okay. So oh. does she ride with Cousin Danielle sometimes? I don't think so. Something's happening. Well, that bus driver teaching the baby how to turn on sister to somebody. somebody. But, you know, it was just to turn in the corner that scared me. Yeah, she can drive on the free. I don't know. She think this the Indy 500. Well, well maybe you ought to let her go. train and get us, get us a check for that <laughs> driving. You have to let her go to the track because yeah, well, the real drivers drive. Because drive. you're gonna need some money for the tickets you're gonna rack up. I'm just saying. Mm-mm, yeah, no, she not. So she high. about to be 20. I, I ain't got to do nothing. It's all in her name. It's over. Jesus, that's well, another distraction. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, I don't know. You know, I, I have had to have this one thought, and I try to be fair about it. I always am thanking God that my babies are almost done. My baby, one more year of high school, is on for college life. And then, but then, but then my heart goes out and I feel unfair. Well, what I feel is she unfair. talking about? Listen, I you feel still got to take care of no, me, no, college? Listen, no, yeah, I do. But the things that go on in charter school and these That's things that we're talking talking about right now change up a little bit. They're, they're a little different. But, yeah. but the part mm-hmm. that gets my, to my heart is I do feel unfair when I feel that excitement because there's a lot of parents out there whose children are still going through it every day. A lot of parents who have to deal with it every day. And one day I might have grandchildren. Well, they're not going to go to school by then. I don't want to be no grandma. <laughs> they taking everything out. They're good to be at home. <laughs> she, they ain't going to go to school. For what? I'm saying this There's no the writing. There's no reading. There's no arithmetic. Well, then that brings Just me computer to computer screen and sit down and pretend you in school. When we come back, I want to talk about that because homeschool is always another option. That's you know, you know I experienced it. Well, it depends who on who. Right. It, Just it's teach not for yourself. Everybody. Ooh, well, no, no, not no. necessarily you yourself. They're not supposed to teach themselves. Yeah, you, you, the but, they, but, they do, but they do have where you can uh-huh. go online when they're high school students and do some I pay stuff directly taxes. with um, <laughs> Did you get a good teacher? <laughs> I pay high taxes. Well, hey, I experienced both. I did I did homeschool with my youngest daughter, with my oldest daughter for a period of time, and then um, it, it was only probably four years or so. 
And so that worked out really, really well. But it's another option to discuss. It's like you said, it's not for everybody. But oh, no, I'll be in jail. I ain't got no patience. You're going to jail over teaching your own. So, Lord, yeah, forbid I know. you get another student. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's why I didn't go into that field. Me and you both. Absolutely. Me and and me on both. that note. And on that note. Well, when we return, we'll talk about homeschool and what the other options are and who the other options are for because she's not homeschooling. Mm-mm. All right. Um, we'll come back. <laughs> this is <unethical. laughs> Uh-uh. How many women out there wanted to actually play drums or percussion? Raise your hand. Wow. That's really cool. Just know that you can do it and it's never too late. This song is for all of you who ever wanted to play. Ready? Everybody clap your hands. Now you sing it. What? A, B, C. Thank you. Now, who said girls couldn't play drums?
Wilson with KRWC.TV, and we're here with the Run Women's Conference meetup group in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, at the beautiful Embassy Suites Hotel at 741 Phillips in the Medical District in Oklahoma City. We're here every first Thursday for our networking meetup group. We're here to build relationships. We're here to grow our business. We're here to meet new people. We're here to get information and exciting ideas. And this is just a precursor to the Run Women's Conference 2016 that will be held here live in June 20th, 2016. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, you can go to My two DJs, you want to with me and my right hand man, Ricky D. I used to practice it. Uh, practice <laughs> for example, here's a telephone ring. Take your man. Oh, yeah. 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 And we are back with Sisters Unedited talking about this messed up education system. So I said, I think that homeschool is an option for some people. And you said, hell to the no. To the no, no, no. no, no. 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 <laughs> Well, I tell you what, it is definitely a huge undertaking because when I did it, my daughter was in, we started with pre-K, did kindergarten, first grade, and I think I ended I with second grade. second grade. But listen, just dealing with the one, phonics, for example, I, I just wonder how, how real teachers do it. Like, I couldn't get my baby to figure out phonics. I, I used every tool I could find. I went to all the teachers' mm -hmm. stores, the bookstores. Like I did videos. I did audios. I put on the video one time, and I was sitting behind my daughter, and she was sitting there watching it. And I was thinking, this is dumb. It's boring, and it's dumb. It's adults with stupid costumes using stupid voices. She ain't going to learn from this stupid video, but I'm waiting. I'm thinking this, waiting to see. Maybe, I don't know. She looked at me, and she said, Mommy, do I have to watch this? <laughs> 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 like it was punishment. And I was like, uh. So let me tell you how I learned how I was able to teach her phonics. Instead of singing A B C D, I sang the sound. Abacadabra, Ephraim, and I sang <laughs> the sounds. See, now, and I'm it not, worked. I'm, I'm I was like, I almost died. That's the love of a mother. I almost I'm died. sending your little ass to school, and we gonna hey, pray about it. <laughs> let me tell you something. I almost died when it happened. I was like, thank you. I don't know where that thought even came from. I just feel like God was helping me through that moment. I don't know how people. So, so that to say, although homeschool is an option, See, so you, just you don't take a bunch that, of parents away from you don't homeschooling. Take that like, well, they need to know. <laughs> They're not abacadabra. <laughs> they well, they abacadabra need to know that, that based on your students' needs, while you guys are out there dogging these teachers out, based on your students, your little <laughs> almost went into a Steve Harvey or Bernie Mac moment. Well, I'm not. I'm not gonna say it. But based on the way your children learn, based on the way they behave, based on what's appealing to them, it can be very difficult reaching each child. So imagine a teacher with 30 plus when you're dealing with an overcrowded classroom. That's amazing. Yeah, it is it's amazing. amazing. And they, sh they should get a few more dollars. And they I know, should get a lot more dollars. Like my me. son has severe tink tinkism. <laughs> it is. It's, it's severe. <laughs> Will you tell he the has people what severe tink tinkism is? You know, they, they're special, as the old <laughs> folks say. They're special from heaven. You know, he has special <laughs> moments. And, you know, I just thank God and pray for this patience that he give me. But he didn't give me none to teach no children. Now, I just, you no. know. Well, so, so people have to make good decisions about whether to homeschool or not. But I feel like, to me, in real life, when it comes down to depending on what your child's going through, some people are being severely bullied. We talked about the cyberbullying right. and the bullying at school. You some of them are being them sexually abused. So you may have to seriously consider if, if moving is not an option, if you're unable to either acquire someone else's address you can use to put them in another school district or something. I mean, it may they have come a time groups. where you actually have so to if, do what you have to do. If I had a child that had to be homeschooled, I would have to find a group to take my baby to because I just don't think that I'm made up of whatever it takes. And to it do comes with a lot too because you know what the other thing is? You know what your child is missing if you homeschool? Socialization. Socialization. The same thing that they missing well now with all this social with media, the video. this phone, right. this telephone. But it's worse. But at least at school, at least when they go out to school, they have the opportunity to socialize mm -hmm. with other students. But homeschool, when I, when I homeschooled Jasmine, we had a group um, in our religious community that we all did outings every weekend with our, and we had children from anywhere from kindergarten to, to senior in high school. Uh. And we did trips and outings and uh. stuff. And it's, it's work, it's work. But yeah. you, you know, know I'm, I'm like that mama on, on 
when you, you know, those sayings, you know, I have a couple of rules that I don't do. I'm not going to the zoo. No damn mo ever. That's why okay. I only had two kids. Ooh, yeah. No I, zoo. I, I can miss the zoo. And too. do not bring no fu fundraiser candy paper <laughs> home to my house. Because I ain't doing that either. Why no fundraiser candy? <laughs> my daughter in this debacle. Lord, I never hey, forget. Hey, I was the pusher last year, baby. <laughs> The, nah, people hate it. Do and you know it. you lose your friends and stuff when you do that too. People hate it. Ah, yeah, you do. She got the box again. She's so, so you know at her, these folks at, at this school that my daughter was in at the time when she was in elementary school, I kept coming up there saying, Now ain't no everybody keep asking me for their goods. Where's these goods? I done gave these folks money. And oh, if I got to go to work and look at my work co workers one more day. And no I got and no to goods. get them no money and no goods. Do you know it took six months to get them goods? Ooh. Oh, what about for Because somebody, now. somebody teacher had ran off with all the money. Mm -hmm. Oh. So the school had to wait for funding. To pay for those things. To, and to pay for those and reorder. Because let me tell you something. That that was the me? wrong neighborhood. Couldn't Us, them me? black mamas that we had on, mm -hmm. we was going to whoop okay, that Okay, but what about up. the flip side? We had a fundraiser one time. It was the pails of cookie dough and the rolls of cinnamon rolls. What about when a million people go ahead and order that from you and they never come and they get don't the dang on bread? And you have a freezer full of bread. I mean, either way, no matter what, I'm with you. Bottom line, I'm with Reason you. No more two. fundraisers. So, thank God, you know, I told everybody after that, Kayla knew, don't come here with that. Don't even bring it here. But my <laughs> son, not too many years ago, I'm going to say, Two years ago, they just sent the candy home with him. He had sold a whole box that I didn't even know about. Yeah, they don't ask. Now, first of all, you got me messed up. Number two, the second box, he is greedy. So he ate most of it. So you had, you had to, to pay, pay for, for it. it. So I had to pay for it. Which Hence that's why that's another don't good bring no do. fundraising <laughs> here. So what's another one? What's another one? Oh, I, you know, but the cool part is, you know what? I used to envy women when they say, oh, my, my youngest is 23. Or my youngest, wow, my youngest is getting ready to say that. Because yeah. this is why. Because yeah. we get to not have to do fundraisers. Ooh, geez. And carpooling. Oh. I never, we never, if I, I never pull had up to carpool. the school one more time to pick up Sydney Porter, and there's four girls with her mom, please drop them off. She got me one I time. I think Andre is starting to do close. that. She got me one time. This girl, and to that. me, listen. Is if that what they do in the summer? If your children, if uh -huh. your children do not live in the like district, that, yeah. in the school district that they go to, you need to make sure that you let other people know that. Don't, you need to make sure your child has a ride, period. When you move out of the district, make sure your own kids have a ride. My baby got me, mom, can you take this or whoever the girl is? And I said, I, look, I really don't. Well, mama, she said she doesn't stay far. I said, okay. And then they stay. I drove 20 minutes outside of the darn school district to take her home. I said, did you ever bring her to my car again? Now even, see, if, even if they don't live far. You know what my daughter would have told her? My mama don't do that. I take. Mm -hmm. I always take one for the team. I never leave a girl mm -hmm. behind. When they come to the car, I try to and make see, sure that's that they the get problem home. Because she has trained her child to know mm -hmm. that we pick up strays. So then yeah. when it's my turn to pick them up, she, she brings strays I to her too. My mom, my mom ain't finna do that. Where you live? You don't live down the street? No, she ain't finna do that. Because if you can't walk to your house from our house, it's not you going to You are way too far. Yeah, because that way you can get a ride to my house and even walk home. You can walk home. And I don't mind, every, you know, but I see that, you know. All of those reasons, the, that there is that, why she don't have kids. Yeah. Because well, the carpooling and the candy. I mm -hmm. definitely look forward to, I hear people all the time say, well, you're going to be so sad and depressed when you become an oh. empty nest. Lies. Lies, Lies they, they tell. tell. That's I, not true. I, I, hey, the last lady that said that, we were at a Target or something checking out. And at the time, I had my stepdaughter and my youngest with me. She said, oh, you're going to miss them. They're so cute. You're going to miss them when they're gone and blah, blah, blah. You're going to be sad. I said, what exactly other than work do you do? Because we right. have a life. So I'm right. not going to be, my, my children are not the only thing that I do. You know, I'm, I'm she's probably I'm a very cookie baker. You she know, probably got she a nice, well, you know, her working home, thing go, working you know, home. And then life would be so wonderful if you didn't need two people to make it. Okay, that would be great. Too. That would be wonderful. But however, right in the real world, in real I was life. in school full time, work full time, full time mama, full time cook, full time. Would you wash the clothes, cleaners? Now you know, I'm going to go that part my too. job. You, you so said you don't want to do, the, you don't wanna do mm -mm. the candy and the mm -mm. carpooling and all that. I don't no. want to cook for people. I don't want to wash dishes regularly. I don't want to do that. I'm already really very self-absorbed when it comes to chores and things. I really, my baby is 16. She wash her own underwear. 
<laughs> Clean out your own plate. You don't need me for that. I taught you how to operate the machine, and we keep That's it what you just get up. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> done. Done. Dead. But another thing that I taught her, but as far as education, one of the things that I taught her that I think every parent should teach their children is how to take their school business seriously and be involved. For mm-hmm. example, if you are missing work or you need to make up work, you are aware that you are missing work right. and you need to make up work. If you need to talk to a teacher about extra credit, you're aware that your need for extra credit is there. If something doesn't look right on your schedule, you are, I like for them to be assertive, as assertive mm-hmm. and as involved and as self-sufficient as possible, but that helps where I can't see what's going on. They know what to bring to me. They know what to ask questions about. They know even if it's a classroom situation, if you if it's too many distractions and or the teachers, I've had my daughter say, "Miss such and such does not know how to handle our class. I need to switch because this is a hard mm. subject for me, and she can't handle her students. And while they're being a distraction, that's I'm being neglected. And that's I need, really special. My baby says she's trying to do something with her life. Okay, so I know I, that's I, right. I, I have and my daughter, to get, and, and my daughter is the same thing, but I, uh, the thing that I taught her is negotiate. Don't take no for an answer. Don't take no for an answer. Especially when it comes down to your grade. Well, that's hey, they why get paid to be there and do all of that. So and like. that's exactly why she graduated with a 3.89 overall like for that. her hey, whole hey, school. Me, yes, job. yes. 20. She about to be 20. I know I have one that's about to be 26. Yes. And she has a BA in psychology. She's working on going to undergrad school now. Hey, Jasmine. Oh, real quick, before we go to break. We're gonna come back and do something fun, but before we do that, I wanna shout out two really cool clients, Cynthia Sam and Lillian Rudd, two of my favorite people because they have been constantly watching Sisters Unedited every week, and they always give us great feedback and tell me what they think about it. So we love them for that, and tell your friends, share us on your social media, call people and tell them that we are talking about something crazy. When we're talking about something crazy, get them online immediately. So when we come back, we're going to do one of our new segments called The Ranch. We won't say who's ranching today or what it's about. We're going to save that for you because there's absolutely no telling. So when we come back to Sisters Unedited, someone is ranching about something. Yeah. See you then. <laughs> you thought about it, dreamed about it, and prayed about it. Starting your own business. Well, you can do it, and you don't have to do it alone. No matter what your business, Genesis Preferred Solutions will help you succeed. Here's Cassandra Bradford. We're a Christian organization designed to help you succeed at what God has called you to do. Genesis Preferred Solutions will help you avoid the pitfalls, fears, and costly mistakes first-time businesses often make. They'll guide you through the proper forms and help surround you with wise counsel. We partner you with other people that can help you become successful. We want to do the paperwork for you so you don't have to. And Genesis Preferred Solutions offers free training and seminars designed to promote success through the Word of God. Put action to the plan that you have. You are the best at what you do. So let's get started. Call Genesis Preferred Solutions now and ask about a tailor-fitted package for you. 800-718-2425. That's 800-718-2425. Church leaders, call today to schedule an exciting free seminar for your church or group. 800-718-2425. Go online to genesispreferred.com and do your own business by the book. You've thought about it, dreamed about it, and prayed about it. Starting your own business. Well, you can do it, and you don't have to do it alone. No matter what your business, Genesis Preferred Solutions will help you succeed. Here's Cassandra Bradford. We're a Christian organization designed to help you succeed at what God has called you to do. Genesis Preferred Solutions will help you avoid the pitfalls, fears, and costly mistakes first-time businesses often make. They'll guide you through the proper forms and help surround you with wise counsel. We partner you with other people that can help you become successful. We want to do the paperwork for you so you don't have to. And Genesis Preferred Solutions offers free training and seminars designed to promote success through the Word of God. Put action to the plan that you have. You are the best at what you do. So let's get started. Call Genesis Preferred Solutions now and ask about a tailor-fitted package for you. 800-718-2425. That's 800-718-2425. Church leaders, call today to schedule an exciting free seminar for your church or group. 800-718-2425. Go online to genesispreferred.com and do your own business by the book. Hey guys, we are back. This is unedited. I am Kimberly Lindsay and we are doing a new segment where one of us gets to rant on what is going on in our life or what's wrong or what's happening. And I have something to say. I'm single now and this internet dating, my niece told me you have to go on and you have to go on and get to help me with my profile and everything, right? Got all these people who hit my picture and they like the picture. Hey, beautiful, how you doing? Hi, handsome. And that's it. Why are you just 
stopping in to say hello. Stop window shopping. I actually put that on my profile. Stop window shopping. Stop in and say something. I don't understand it. So if you are internet dating, please, please hit me up on Sisters Unedited Facebook and help me. Give me some pointers. What are you going through? That in one word conversation. How does that happen? How does that happen? So you exchange numbers with somebody. Can I have your phone number? Let's talk. Let's chat. Sure. You give them the number and they say, hey, how are you? I said, hey, how my day was? The day was great. And then they say, okay. <laughs> and you don't hear anything else. I don't understand how this works. Can you get three days later? Hey, beautiful. Just wanted to say hi. Oh, hi. How was your day? Great. She's a modern day Kim Kardashian. <laughs> and then you don't hear anything else. And I, I, I do not understand internet day. So I'm on there and I'm giving it a fair shot. I'm really trying and I'm not gonna say the site because there is one site that you do not want to get on but I'm gonna let you learn it for yourself because this site, they can actually see when you open their messages. Mm. And then they get angry with you because you don't respond back to their messages. I just have to tell you, I'm having a hard time and I'm, I'm probably gonna give it another 30 days of internet. I can't even call it dating because I haven't had any dates. I'm, I'm internet matching and and having one word conversations with people. Mm -hmm. So I must be doing it wrong. So please, please, if you're having success dating on the internet, hit your girl up, KimberlyLindsay.com, go to Sisters Unedited, give me some pointers, and help me out. Help a sister out. That's all I got to say. Well, I just got to say, that was the nicest rant I ever heard. Wasn't it? Wasn't it it just really nice. was. She was just And nice. I'm surprised she held back because it's been... A hell of an experience. We've both been doing it, and it's funny. I don't want to curse. I didn't say and you had to curse. It was some, just nice. It was really nice. Yeah. It was just but but real hopefully pleasant. it's educational for yeah. some people who are. Well, my there. cousin. I just, want, I just want the men to know if they're internet dating, you can have a conversation. Some things come across as creepy. But well, I can, think well, the you whole can put thing somebody's is pictures. creepy. Well, somebody, no, to me, if you communicate with someone, that's not creepy. But if they, like, they could do a flirt. You and you just see it. a flirt, but they never ever say anything. But to you, you can right. get catfish messing around with stuff you like can. that. You can, and then that's well, when you, you. But but listen, catfish is only so catfishy when you sit there for six to eight months and you start having right. feelings for somebody. You don't wait that long to meet someone. No, if I can't meet you but within I'm just the first saying, seventy-two hours. When you hours, meet them, it could be a lie. That's cool. That's cool. That's we'll, okay. we'll be lying over a free meal because I see you at lunch for our first meeting. And uh, or if, see, if you're not the person, I don't have to stay. If you do coffee, that way take your pocket knife and your mace. Take your pocket knife and your mace have somebody but, in the background. But you can walk up to somebody in Listen, Walmart. We are going to do a show later on dating. And actually, you guys stay tuned and watch out. Keep checking on our Sisters Unedited page because we're going to be doing a live audience soon. And dating is definitely one of the topics. And so I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk some more about the wild, wild internet situation. Dating and ridiculous. cheating. And, dating and, and, and maybe cheating. we can get some insight for real from guys about why they do things the way they do. And guys, too, to some from women. And we're not going to be one-sided, guys. Don't be scared to yeah, respond because we're, we're going to let gonna you ask even. questions, too. We'll be talking celibacy and, and the conversation. Oh, that whole, that whole 90 day oh. thing. So, you know, some guys are saying, well, if you can hold out sex for 90 days, then I'm not paying for anything for 90 days. So we're going to question to you, then. Well, what you is, this prostit is this right. prostitution? <laughs> What are we wait doing? a minute. Wait a and that's minute. That's going to be part of the conversation. And that's going to be a live Lord. show. So you do not Let's want to be to come out and see where we at. Dwight Fanchoy, I'm calling you out. I know you want to come back. You were in our live audience before. He's one of the hypest people we know. He has a bring lot your, to bring say. Bring your fellas. Bring the boys out. Bring your you single fellas. Veronda Johnson. We're going to try to hook Sharonda you up. Sharonda Williams. Cheryl Jones. Who else? Kim and Michelle Fitch. Charlotte Fitch. I'm calling all y'all out. Cynthia, Sam, Lillian Rudd, you guys come out, bring friends, all of my coworkers, all of our coworkers. Everybody I met at Zenas. Come out. Everybody come at Zenas, out. come. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So next week's topic is the total opposite. Well, I, I guess it would segue well with bad dating. Bad dating could lead to divorce. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, right? <laughs> it, that's what happens. Listen, with the path I'm on with this internet dating thing, it you could happen. You divorce in your future. <laughs> Have got married there, but I know I'm gonna get a divorce. So I'm we'll talk about divorce, and we'll talk about we talked about educate, educating our children today, and we'll talk about the effects of divorce on our children, on our families, on our society. Somebody asked me about how, how long it takes to get a divorce. Now I said, well, when I went in, they told me that day it was a done deal. <laughs> they so, would. Oh, you want more drama? 
say we didn't have any property together. Drive through we didn't have any children in and out. Literally Girl. in and out of that marriage. Ooh, Jesus, I wish I would have had that. So next week when we when we come back, we're gonna talk about you know the effects of divorce and how how it works for our community. So it's been a pleasure. We miss Cassandra again. She's out feeling uh, horrible again. She's really tired. She's a hardworking woman. Check her out. Say something. Send her a message on Sisters on Say something to us. Say something. Say something. We want to know what you got to say. These are your sisters on Sisters Unedited. We'll see you next week.